Do you remember the TV show The Wonder Years, late 80s, early 90s? It was about a kid who was growing up in the 1960s, but it was narrated by himself as an adult looking back on his childhood. I, I loved it. When it was airing, I was a couple years younger than the main character, Kevin. And so I related with the things that he went through in middle school and high school. And his friendship with his best friend, Paul. And his friend, Winnie, who he had a crush on and then became his on-again, off-again girlfriend. But since the show was narrated looking back, a couple seasons in, the narrator revealed that Kevin and Winnie didn't grow up and get married to each other. I was crushed. I was like, that can't be. Like, surely they're just saying this right now, and they're going to reveal later that it really, they really did get married. Like, I think I was pretty invested in uh, Kevin's relationship with Winnie. But <laughs> with that, uh, that desire I had was a desire for a happy ending at the end of the story. We love happy endings, right? Uh, it's not just for fairy tales, but we like stories where the good guy wins or where the relationship works out. We like things to work out well. Of course, we know that not everything has an ending that is happy in the end. We're continuing our series looking at the book of Acts, and we see that this doesn't really have a happy ending. Now, Acts is kind of a sequel to the book of Luke, written by the same author. The book of Luke tells the story of Jesus' life and his ministry and his death and ultimately his resurrection. And then the book of Acts continues the story with what happened after the resurrection and how the message spread around the Mediterranean. If you haven't read this book of Acts, I encourage you to take some time and read it. Maybe you want to read it all in one chunk and the like two or three hours of reading it straight through. Or maybe you want to read it a chapter a day. But if you haven't gotten to read it yet, I really encourage you to read the whole thing. Now, we're focusing on the last portion of the story here. And we see that it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Paul, at the end of the, everything, Paul is imprisoned. And he's awaiting trial, but ultimately we know from church history that he did go on to be killed for his faith in Jesus. But we're focusing in on kind of on chapter 27, a little bit before that and a little bit after that here, as we see the life of Paul. We've been walking through this story and we've seen Paul go from someone who is persecuting followers of Jesus to him meeting Jesus himself, the resurrected Lord. And then to him giving his life to serving Jesus and becoming one of the most influential people in human history because of how many people he told about Jesus' resurrection. But that talking about Jesus' resurrection did get him in trouble. And he got arrested for talking about Jesus. He was put on trial first by the Sanhedrin, the leaders in Jerusalem, uh, the Jewish council there. And then he was tried before Felix, the Roman governor, when the, the Sanhedrin said that they couldn't do anything more with him. And so he was tried by Felix. And Felix kept him uh, under guard, and he was imprisoned for a couple of years during this time. He came before him a few times for trial, and then it moved slowly on until another governor came in, and his name was Festus. And so he started the process again of trying Paul. And Paul finally, in, in one of these, these trials, he, Festus said that he wants to send Paul back to Jerusalem to be tried there again. And Paul says, I, I'm done with this. I'm a Roman citizen, so I can appeal to Caesar's court in Rome. So that's what I'm going to do. I appeal to Rome. And so Festus then is getting preparing to send Paul back to or on to Rome for another trial. But he brings in King Agrippa, the king of the region, and he asks his perspective on all this. And so Paul talks with uh, with Agrippa and presents his case again for faith in Jesus, as well as Paul's own case for why what he's doing is not anything that is worthy of being arrested. Now, as Paul is presenting his case to King Agrippa. He, he says to this, King, he wraps it up saying, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? Talking about the Old Testament Jewish prophets. He says, I know you do. And Agrippa responds, he says, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Listen to Paul's response. 
a short time or long, I pray that God, to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. He wanted them to become followers of Jesus as well, but not to have to be imprisoned for it. But he is calling out and wanting people to experience the new life in Jesus that he himself has experienced. At the end of the this uh, trial, Agrippa says, it's a shame that you, uh, that you appealed to Rome because now we have to send you to Rome because really you haven't done anything worthy of being arrested. But you appealed to Rome, so we have to send you there. So Paul then is taken by ship to Rome and along with other prisoners and guards on this, uh, this prison vessel. The trip was not straightforward. They worked their way along the coast of the Mediterranean, the Adriatic Seas, uh, on their way there. And they set off trying to get to the island of Crete. And as they went there, the winds were not cooperating. They faced some storms and ended up landing at a port there. And they were trying to decide whether they should stay there for the winter or if they should go around to the northern side of Crete into a place that was going to be safe uh, to be a, a harbor there. Paul recommended, that based on what he was hearing from God, that they stay where they were. But the owner of the ship and the captain of the ship decided to go to what was a more natural, safe harbor for the winter. And so they set off, and they thought that they were encountering a, a good wind that was going to lead them the direction that they wanted to go. And the wind started out really good, but then it picked up, and it ended up being hurricane-force winds. It was a northeaster, a major storm that they faced. And it meant that they were not able to get to the other side of Crete where they were trying to go. In life, storms will happen. Maybe you identify with Paul. Oh, maybe you have thought that the, something that was happening was, was good winds. It was, oh, the wind was at your back and moving you in the right direction. And suddenly it got stronger and stronger and became a hurricane and seemed to blow you off course. But we can learn a lot from Paul's response here. In the middle of this storm, Paul hears from God and he trusts him. Paul trusts during the storm. They've been in this, in the midst of this storm for a while, and Paul stands up, and after a few days, he encourages them. He says, now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all those who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that this will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Here, Paul hears from God and he trusts him in the middle of the storm. When we face difficult times in life, we can continue to trust the one who has made us and who knows us. Here at Cabot Church, we are a part of the Methodist tradition. John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist movement in Christianity. And before he got his awakening, his spiritual awakening, he was a pastor already. He was serving in a local church. And then he felt called to go to the Americas and to serve in the colony of Georgia as a missionary and a priest there. And so he goes there, spends a couple of years there, is not very successful in the things he tries to do. But one thing that happened on his way to the Americas changed his life forever. He was caught in a storm, much like Paul was here. But he was on a ship with a number of other people, and a group of people were Moravians, who were a certain type of followers of Jesus. What he noticed was a difference in the way that they responded to this storm, though. He said that even their children, in the middle of being battered by these waves, the ship being tossed back and forth, the children and the adults were singing praises to God. They were praying calmly. And he recognized that that came because their trust in God was one that was an eternal one. They knew that even if they were to, the ship were to crash and they were to drown, that they would go into Jesus' presence. 
John Wesley realized that his faith was not where their faith was. Eventually, after he returned to England, after his time in Georgia, he had an experience of God strangely warming his heart. And he understood what Jesus had done for him. And he, his faith grew through that. After that time, he said that that time in the, on the ship, he said he was almost a Christian. Much like King Agrippa was there as he heard the message but didn't respond. He said he was almost a Christian then. It wasn't until later that he became altogether a Christian. In the middle of the storms, we can learn and grow if we're willing to trust God in the midst of them. Paul trusted during the storm, but things did not go better after that. Paul said that things were going to be, oh, that they were going to survive, that God had given them this word, and he trusted in God's word, but they went from being in the middle of the storm to being shipwrecked. But even in the shipwreck, Paul trusted God. They had been in the storm for 14 days. And Paul says, encourages everyone to, to eat at that point, says you need some food, you need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. And he said, after this, he, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all, and he broke it and began to eat. But then they were brought, they saw land, they headed towards the land thinking they could run the ship into the ground, but there was a huge sandbar in the way. And so they got stuck in the sandbar and the waves kept crashing into the stern of the boat and the back of the boat was just shattered eventually and the whole ship was destroyed. They were able to be saved, most of them grabbing onto some wreckage from the ship and floating onto the shore. But Paul trusted God even during the shipwreck. Sometimes life doesn't get better. Sometimes it gets worse. Even in those dark times, we can trust God in the middle of the shipwreck. Sometimes God gives us opportunities through these difficult seasons to share his love with other people. You know, one of the granted minor storms that I've faced in my life over these last 18 months has been dealing with vehicles. Like one thing after another going wrong, breaking down, hitting deer, hitting another deer, like all sorts of things happening with, with our cars. So it's been a lot. But this past week, I was uh, getting a shuttle ride back from the dealer, back to my house, and you know, 20 minute ride, uh, just making some small talk with the driver. And we were, we were literally talking about the weather for an extended time, like not a deep conversation. Uh, but then he we were talking about some vacations, you know, summer travel plans and things like that. And he mentioned a little bit about some problems that he'd had recently. Didn't say any details or anything about it. Uh, I just asked a little bit more, just giving him the opportunity to share anything that he wanted to, not prying or pushing, but just out seeing if he wanted to talk about something. And he shared some deep hurts in his life that he had experienced, even experiencing suicidal thoughts and uh, going into checking himself in for psychiatric care and the ways that over the last couple of months he'd been putting his life back together. And so I asked him as he was talking about how he was caring for his mind and for his body. I asked how he was caring for his soul in the midst of this as well. We were able to talk a little bit about that. And then as we pulled into my driveway, I was able to ask to pray for him. And so there we sat right next to the house and I just prayed a brief prayer of God's work in his life. Now, myself, I was perfectly content with that conversation staying at a surface level. Like I wasn't looking for anything deep or, or any conversations about life's problems, but it felt like God was prompting in that situation. I was there and able to speak to him because of a storm that I'm going through in my own life, and God used it as a chance to show God's love. Look for opportunities during a storm. You don't know what God might be lining up for you. 
We see that in John Wesley's life as he, uh, as he grew through that time of the physical storm that he was in and then coming to a deeper faith in Christ and becoming an altogether Christian. We see this happening in Paul as well for, because after the shipwreck, they land on the island of Malta with this shipwreck and they stay there for a while. They go stay through the winter there. Chapter 28, uh, starting with verse 7, it says that they welcomed them into his, uh, one, the, the leaders welcomed them into his home, showed him hospitality for three days. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer, placed his hands on him and healed him. When this had happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. Luke says, they honored us in many ways, and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. They were able to show God's love because of the storm that they had been through. Look for opportunities that we can allow God to show us ways that he wants to use us. That we can show his love to others, even in circumstances that we ourselves never wanted to be in. Let's pray. God, thank you for being with us in the middle of the storms of life. Help us to trust you in them. And then give us opportunities to grow and to show your love to others in the middle of those storms. We ask this in your name. Amen.